or it didn't want me to hurt myself. I don't know. But we actually began to communicate this way by exchanging ideas, by him pulling thoughts out of my mind, by me thinking, I don't want to hurt you anymore. I don't want to hurt you. I'm sorry that this happened. And did I get a an okay from him? No. I got kind of this blank uh, openness of acceptance. So it wasn't a conversation. It wasn't an absolute definitive acceptance of my position to his position. It was this ragged, chaotic, primal state of acceptance of communication. And, and I mean, I made audio tapes, I made videotapes of this. Some I still have. Some have been stolen. Some I've shown publicly, some I haven't. For the same reason that I described before, that I believe that by holding on to those and not letting them all out has kept me alive. And that I do have still some hard physical evidence that this is real that keeps me alive, that people want to take from me. If I had it in my possession, I would be dead and it would be stolen. But because I've kept it safe and I've kept it away and people have helped me, I believe they are still trying to find it. They would like to acquire it, but they haven't been able to because I've been creative with other people's help to keep this safe, to keep this alive, so to speak. It's a responsibility. It's not a treasure. It's not something that I, you know, could sell and demand money for. People have offered me money. People offered me a million dollars for the tape that is now freely viewed on YouTube, on the internet. I accepted people's help. I expected to get better and repay their generosity, but I never sold this off because I knew if I did, it would be buried somewhere in somebody's warehouse or in some government office and nobody would ever be able to understand the reality and the truth of this. And I've also learned something else. I believe that this communication, this constant communication that I've continually had with this little guy that we nicknamed Freddy has put information in me that I don't understand, but has become a responsibility that maybe this device has another use. And maybe that use is coming to a time and a place and a situation where maybe somebody will be called upon to use it for a certain purpose. And that is a responsibility, to care for it, to keep it safe, and to not look at it as some means of a monetary gain. I could have made a lot of money selling this stuff off. I've had collectors from all over the world offer me more than a million dollars for the tape, for the audio information, for some of the photographs, and for the artifact. And I'll never sell them. I will never sell them not to television programs, not to private individuals or collectors, not to anyone. Because it's a sacred right for all of us to know this truth and the responsibility to support each other in knowing that this is a reality. This is a reality that all of us need to accept. Like the reality that we are human, that we are vulnerable, but we are all part of a much bigger process of life. We're all connected. I believe every living thing now is connected. And I think this has shown me that. This has given me so much broader scope of, of what life is about. Maybe our concept of life has been skewed along the way. Maybe, maybe human reasoning has changed the truth about our own existence. Maybe we've always coexisted with life that literally helped 
us evolve, but we are shallow. Human, the human design is shallow and very ridden with with problems of its own: guilt, jealousy, greed. We we push people away at times where we need to support them the most. We are at our best when the situations are at their worst. That's when we come together. That's when we support each other. Well, we should be doing that all the time. I mean, we should not have wars. We should learn to to respect each other, end our differences, even if that means keeping borders between us. We can respect the borders. We don't have to have everybody be like us. There is a a great diversity out there. And accept the diversity. Accept the difference. Embrace the difference. Learn from all of our cultures, because all of our cultures are all part of life. They're all part of this mosaic, this beautiful mosaic of life here on Earth. And I believe that I've learned a lot of why we are here. I believe that thousands of other people who have had contact have learned a lot of this information about some of the new realities that are now only now coming out. That some people think are, you know, these these etherical, spiritual ideas, and they are. They're a different way of looking at reality. They are opening our eyes. Instead of living your life asleep and being led like blind sheep to the slaughter, I can't live that way. I won't live that way. That's why I told the truth about what happened to me. That's why I'm telling the truth now. Did I do it right? Did I was I was I the perfect candidate to do this? No, I didn't choose to do this. I wasn't good at this. But I had no choice. I had all my other options taken away from me, and I haven't done this on my own. I mean, without the help of thousands of people, you wouldn't be viewing this. You wouldn't be hearing this. I would have either been dead or locked away somewhere. But people have resupported me. They have continued to ask questions. They have continued to ask me to continue to tell this story. And tell you what happened to me, and that's all I've ever done. I've told the truth about what happened to me, my truth, my feelings of my experience, how good, how bad, how indifferent, how chaotic my experience. It's different for everyone. Not everyone feels the same way about this as I do. Do I feel I was chosen? No. Do I feel I was selected? Honestly, no. I wasn't special. I don't feel I was special. I feel like it was circumstance that I was in the right place at the right time, and I came upon something that my dog happened to have gotten to first in an instant when this little guy was vulnerable, and because of those circumstances. It wasn't able to escape. It wasn't able to make itself invisible to me or to her. It, it, many of these things are possible, but for whatever reason, that's how I feel it happened. Why does it keep coming back to me? Why does these? Why do these encounters continue to happen to me? I don't know. Maybe it's created a relationship with me. Maybe it's been thrown out by its superiors because. I damaged it. All of those things are possibilities, but the fact remains: it keeps coming back to me. People who have met me have seen it when I haven't been with them. People in other countries have seen the same thing, the same one, because it has a scar on its head. It's unique. It's identifiable. Just like I can identify any one of my friends or any one of my family members. I know which one it is. Sometimes it's come back with other ones, just like itself. Yes, I found an artifact. 
with it in the forest. Yes, it's truly 